While your day is winding down, they're just getting started. This is South Coast Tonight with Chris McCarthy and Marcus Farrow. They've got you covered on all the news of the day, from local issues to politics on both sides of the aisle. This is the place where the movers and shakers come to be heard, to listen, and where they're held accountable. This is South Coast Tonight on WBSM. Welcome to South Coast tonight. So we have Sheriff Elect Paul Haro here. Before we get started with him, uh, just a couple of housekeeping things. It's Monday. Uh, Chris is going to be back Wednesday. Chris, uh, so Chris and I will be, will be regular programming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Of course, we're carrying the Pats game here, the Pats and Bills. We're the number one home for the Bills in the South Coast. So um, I mean the Pats in the South Coast, not the Bills. And so we'll be carrying that here. And you can listen to it on WBSM.com uh, on WBSM.com or on, uh, on the radio. And then Friday, Chris and I are going to a social engagement, so you, uh, Jack Spillane will be filling in, in for us on Friday. But we're here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I'm here now with Sheriff-Elect Paul Harreau. Uh Mr. Sheriff-Elect, congrats on your election, and uh, how are you? I'm just fine. Thanks for having me on, Marcus. So, um, you know, you're, you're, you're still in your position as Attleboro Mayor for now. You're transitioning January 3rd, I believe. You're going to be formally sworn in as the Bristol County Sheriff. Um, I, a lot has... I mean, I, a lot of people are wondering how the transition's going. And by the way, we're taking your calls at 508-996-0500. We're also taking uh, messages on the WBSM app chat as well if you want to ask uh, Sheriff-elect Haro a question. So um, uh, so anyway, Mr. Sheriff-elect, you have a uh, – have you had any contact with um, Sheriff Hodgson's office – during the from the time that you were elected till today, yeah, uh, Jonathan Darling uh, reached out to me, and he reached. Out, I think a couple of days afterwards, I gave him my phone number, and uh, you know, then I think Hodgson and I've basically were playing phone tag a little bit since the election. I didn't reach out to the sheriff last week because it was uh, you know Thanksgiving holiday, week and yeah. holiday week and everything, so I, I just kind of took a break from trying. But I'll uh, reach out again this week. Okay. So what do you um what do you, in this transition period obviously you're going to have some contact with the sheriff what are you hoping to accomplish in your transition period um, in terms of uh, getting to know the the landscape well basic things um Meeting with department heads would be a good idea to find out who is who and, you know, what they are doing with the departments and, you know, just in, a basic introduction is a good idea. Um, getting a tour of the facility would be a good idea. There's, uh, you know, when I, when I took over as mayor of Attleboro, it, it, I look at it very similar is I'm inheriting an organization that is, uh, you know, a very large organization, hundreds of employees, um, you know, budgets in the, you know, millions of dollars I mean, the city of Attleboro has a budget of 160 million dollars and sheriff's office of 55 million dollars um you know they're, they're big organizations so the just the initial meeting of people and like literally learning the lay of the um you know, the departments going to the different facilities ash street dartmouth um you know looking at the all like all the facilities and then it's, you're not going in blind on that first day. But right. on, on the first day, what I'm going to do is also call a department head meeting, just like I did when I um, became mayor, and just talk about the expectations, let them get to know me a little bit. They can ask me questions. There's probably a lot of concern out there sure. about what I'm going to do as um, you know, sheriff. I'm going to go in and clean house. And that's not what I did as mayor. Um, in fact, the first person I got rid of was 
about two years after I had been mayor, and that was a volunteer. Um, it was on the Traffic Study Commission. Um, can't really talk about why it's a personnel issue, sure. but it you know it was. But that was it took two years for that. So you know I respect the institutional knowledge of people, um, and they they they're doing a job. The jail is you know operating right now, and if I were to go in and just start getting rid of people. Um, on day one and, and you know that's we're throwing institutional knowledge out the window of course and then if i brought somebody in who doesn't know the institution even if they have a background in corrections then you know they, they have a huge learning curve so right you know that that's one of the things i'd like people to take a little bit of you know relax a little bit about and you know they don't have to worry about oh paul's gonna come and just start getting rid of people that's and, and eventually i will change things mm -hmm. but i said this on your program in the past yeah that Everybody will continue to have a job, you know, but I might say, okay, we're getting rid of this job. It's, it's not, you know, something that I find to be a priority mm -hmm. and I'll offer you something over here. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll be first in line over here and whatever that might be. So you're not going to let go anybody, uh, at least when you start. And uh, it's because of a few reasons. One, you want to have continuity of of a sort of administration there. You, like you said, people uh, might have a learning curve. And um, I think that's important to know. When people may leave, I know you said or, uh, when you were on here about, um, about a month ago, that you expect some people may leave. Um, but uh, you're not going to make anybody leave. Yeah, no, certainly not um, not right away. You know, I mean, there's, there might be some positions that I uh, say, okay, I'm not going to have this position anymore. This is just not necessary for, you know, such and such a position. One particular position I've talked about in the past is a chief of staff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't have a chief of staff as, you know, mayor of Attleboro. Uh, I, you know, I just... Really? But yeah, I don't have a chief of staff as a wow. mayor. I don't. I, use, I have two office staff. I have Kathy and Allison in my office who are both Republican, and they were both brought on by Mayor Dumas. Sure. And they worked with Mayor Dumas, the mayor that I uh, defeated in 2017. And they were very loyal to him, and they worked with him very closely. And let me tell you, when I came in, you know, if I got rid of them, that would have been my first mistake. Yeah. And I, um, I didn't. I, they're both awesome. Kathy and Allison are so competent. They are so, uh, like, they... They're, you know, they tell me when I'm, you know, I'm not thinking about things like, you know, like you know, I'm not thinking something through the right way. They've been, they've been, they just do the job. And that's what I want to, is people just do the job. I, it, like there were Gary Erasian. Gary Erasian is the city planning director. He's director of city planning and planning and development. And he wrote this letter to the editor that was just glowing and praising Mayor Dumas in 2017. I mean, it sure. was just, it was over the top. It was such like, uh, like, oh, Mayor Dumas is, the, you know, this, he's that, he's wonderful. And so when I won, Gary thought I was going to come in and say, okay, Gary, you're out. No, yeah. no, Gary, Gary has good institutional knowledge and Gary is awesome. Um, you know, I, I never had a problem with Gary. Barry Lacasse, the budget director in Attleboro, when I was a state rep, Barry Lacasse, and I, you know, we clashed. I hated Barry Lacasse. Mm -hmm. He was the budget director in Attleboro. And I even told people, I said, when I get in there, I'm firing Barry Lacasse. I hated this guy. I've never said that about, you know, people right now. Right. But I did not like Barry Lacasse. When I started working with Barry, I realized I was wrong about Barry. Sure. And Barry was, getting rid of him would have been my second mistake. My right. first mistake is if I had gotten rid of Kathy or Allison. Mm -hmm. So I, I recognize, and so I've been through this process before. This isn't the first time I've taken over a big organization. Right. And, you know, but I respect the institutional knowledge. The jail is buzzing right along. There's things going on in the jail. Things are moving along. And, you know, so I have to respect that. If I go in and just start changing things, I'm going to screw things up. And I know that. Right. So, but over the course of time, things ha there are some things that need to change yeah I, those are the things i can't paint on yeah and so the, you know i ha it, i have to do that in the appropriate manner you know it, it, so the most important thing with the staff is that they are honest with me yeah. and then i'm honest with them but then the second most important thing is that they listen and i listen i'm going to listen to them because they have institutional knowledge but then they also have to listen to me and help help me implement that vision because i'm coming in with a mandate for change yeah so, yeah. so um, yeah, and you know, I've, I've heard most of the accounts I've heard from good sources is that nobody's really planning on leaving. I've heard some people are planning on leaving, but I've heard by and large, 
uh, the staff at Bristol County House of Correction is not planning on leaving due to the change in leadership. So um, a few things we've got some we've got some uh, we've got a call on the line. We're going to take it. Uh, we've got app chat message uh, from a listener actually in Oak Bluffs who says congratulations on the win. I wish you well with your transition. So uh, 508-996-0500. You can also message uh, Sheriff Elect Haro on the app chat as well. Good evening. You're live. Hello. Hey. Hi. Uh, so I have a question uh, for the sheriff as far as recruitment and hiring goes. Um, I have a family member that works for the department right now, and they've been extremely short-staffed. Um, you know, so as the wife of a, um, you know, an officer there, I'm just wondering if there are plans for recruitment and hiring within the department to help relieve some of the staff that's been working so hard. Yeah, that's a good question. I think uh, the current sheriff Hodgson he is doing some recruitment right now. Uh, recruitment is dependent upon funding. That's yeah. part of it, and so we have to make sure that the funds are available. So I can't just say, okay, we're going to recruit. That's that's one aspect. The other aspect is actually people willing and able to join the workforce. And that's another aspect. So we can go ahead and we can post for a job, but if nobody wants that job, um, then we have to figure out how to entice people to take that job and how to make it a little more, uh, a little more appetizing. One of the right. things. So I know there's been a lot of new incentives offered mm -hmm. to new, you know, hiring, but I, I just, the impression is that retention is really a tough issue mm -hmm. right now. And it's, you know, creating a tough morale for the officers that are putting in, you know, 60, 65 hours a week, you know, who enjoy their job, but are at a point where they don't really see, you know, a lot of relief in the horizon. Right. I, I've heard that as well. And that's something where I need to go in, talk to, um, you know, the union, first of all, talk to personnel, uh, get a real honest sense of what's going on, you know, why that's an issue. Um, you know, it's, it's to be able to say exactly what I'm going to do over the radio is, you know, it's, it's, it would, I'd be speaking in sound bites. It's a complicated problem. And I, I know you recognize that. That's why you're calling in. It's a complicated problem. And something that's a complicated problem is going to take a lot of work to uh, do things differently. Now, Sheriff Hodgson, he's been there for 25 years and, you know, he has his ways of doing things. I'm going to come in and do some things differently. It just like it, just like I did with Attleboro, I, when I took over as mayor of Attleboro, I didn't come in and just do everything radically different. You know, there was there were some things I did differently than the previous mayor, and I, I prioritized other things that he didn't prioritize. And so, you know, we made progress in Attleboro, but now it's time for me to move on and no longer be mayor of Attleboro. And the same thing will happen with sheriff. I'm going to go in, make some changes, and then eventually move on as well. What those are going to be exactly, that's something that I can I can promise you I'm going to take it seriously I'm going to look at it I'll look, I'll be looking at things differently than the current sheriff and you know that that's what I can say right now but what are those specifics going to be we can't really say until I get in there I know uh, correctional officer's pa salary is an issue that people talk about but speaking in yeah. a general sense is there going to be an effort on your behalf to both retain and recruit employees at the Bristol County House of Correction yes Okay. Yeah. yeah, there is. Yeah. And, you know, another... No, thank oh. you. I appreciate you addressing that. I just think, keep, you know, keeping open lines of communication with the staff that are there, mm -hmm. you know, is an important part, you know, of coming in and maintaining those, you know, new relationships or building those new relationships. Yeah, you know, a lot of staff have reached out to me um, before the election and after the election. A lot of people have been reaching out to me uh, who currently work there. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate that. I think it's really, you know, it's great. Another, there's another class of people that have been reaching out to me, and there are some people who have reached out and just said, "Hey, you know, you're going to give me this job. You're going to give me that job. I want this." I'm like, "Listen, do you see a job posting? <laughs> I don't see a job posting. So why are you asking me to give you a job? You know, and so I haven't even gotten in there yet. There's no job posting. I'm not. I'm not offering a job. Other organizations have reached out to me. They offer different treatment programs, and they say, "Hey, we offer, we have this program. We have that program, and you know, we want to you know get in there." I'm like, "Okay, okay, that's great. I'm not in there yet." But when I get in there, wait for the RFPs, you know, wait for the request for proposals. That's how I do it. You know, there's, I'm not going to just give people jobs unless there's a job posting. I'm not going to bring in organizations to do treatment programs unless we issue an RFP. And the process is going to be uh, by MGL, Mass General Law, and it's going to be transparent, the scoring criteria. Because that's how we do things in Attleboro. 
Okay, I, I appreciate you addressing it and taking my call. Okay. Thanks for the call, man. Appreciate it. And we'll continue to take calls with Sheriff Electoral at 508-996-0500. Kenny from Dartmouth. Um, okay, so this is a question that's been brought up uh, during the campaign, um, and I think it's an important one. Uh, it's basically, this is the question that Kenny from Dartmouth has. Will you allow the relationship with the department's uh, role in training the police academies continue? Say that question again. Will you allow the relationship with the department's role in training the police academies continue? Training the police academies? Uh, I think they have a role in training at the police academies. Sorry. Okay, so the the department, I just want to make sure. The Bristol County Sheriff's Office, uh, according to the app chat yeah. um, uh, messenger, because there is a broad, there's been a broader conversation mm-hmm. about the you know the sheriff's department's role in, in law enforcement. Mm-hmm. This the app chat messenger said, "Will um, will you allow the relationship with the department's role? So the department has a role in uh, training people at the police academies. Um, will you allow that to continue?" Uh, as sheriff, I want to learn what that is. You know, okay. so it's one of those things where um, I'm on day one. I'm not canceling that. You know, yeah. I'm not going to cut that because I could be causing you know disruption by doing that. But I need to know exactly what that is. I want to focus inward, and that's you know my uh, prerogative. That's my right, and that's really focusing inwards towards the jail rather than you know outside the jail. I mean, it's it's. I really want to get the jail under control. You know. Well, well, I I hear you. Um, they. The, the there is that conversation that's been had and, and I think you've addressed it pretty well in terms of the sheriff's department let's just say more broadly because we're talking about that specific role with local law enforcement that they have some training in the police academies and it's something you said you're going to look into uh, and see if it's a viable if it's it's viable but you have at least acknowledged that there is a role for the sheriff's department in assisting local law enforcement and you're not necessarily going to kibosh that uh, as sheriff you're going to look into it correct that's right one one of the things i don't want our uh department to do is the job of police i don't want them to be out patrolling the streets do you know duplicating efforts with the police now some people might say oh my god that's i mean let's get real about it how many sheriffs are we going to have out in fall river or new bedford and how much Mm -hmm. of a difference as one or two or three or five however many patrol cars would actually have in those large in fact this you know the you know years ago the the current sheriff clashed with a previous uh mayor of fall river i believe uh you know about doing patrol you know it was it new bedford too uh i don't know if it happened in fall river it definitely happened in new bedford maybe maybe i'm remembering it wrong maybe it was new New bedford not fall river yeah it did it definitely happened in new bedford i I know that for a fact and i think that that conversation was really at its height i think in the mid-2000s but yes um yeah uh but but you said before you're not you know you're coming in you're a democrat but it doesn't necessarily make you anti-police you have a record of oh, of no. uh, uh expanding the police department actually in attleboro oh yeah absolutely yeah it, it, I, most democrats are not anti-police it, it's there's a handful yeah. of idiots and that, that's what they are these idiots on the fringes who talk about defunding the police and uh you know they they're not you know advocating in the best interest of public safety or even their own party okay. i mean when you as a mayor I, you know, if, I, if we start defunding the police, the very first thing that's going to get cut is the lowest hanging fruit, the easiest thing to cut. Right. And that's police training. Yeah. You can't cut staff. You know, I mean, you, well, that's something you could, but that's not a good idea. Um, but the first thing, if you want to, but then if you cut police training, you're actually cutting the very thing that is, police need to stay out of the news to do oh. the job right. Right. You, like in Attleboro, I've tripled the police training budget. It, we invested in implicit bias, uh, training and implicit bias, de-escalation, duty to intervene. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, no you know, uh, dealing with uh, mental illness, Asperger's, autism. Um, so when you have a well-trained police force, they're going to do the job the right way if they're not well trained you know and so so cutting tr- police funding the first thing that's going to go is probably p- the, the training that's the easiest yeah. thing to cut um i know that doing the job of mayor working with the police chief but yeah in Attleboro, i mean like yeah i'm not i'm not anti-police by any means i um you know like we created a traffic unit we created a cyber unit i purchased riot gear for police officers which mm-hmm. they've never had before um when uh, my police chief kyle hagney was in a little bit of hot water last february when he uh, you know, had a uh, had a use contact. You know, there was use of force. It wasn't sure. It wasn't excessive force, but it was use of force on a high school kid, a seventeen year old. Yeah. Um, you know, I got to chief. I, I went over. I interviewed the chief. I said, "Hey, what happened here?" Every second of the way, and you know, I got his back. You know, it wasn't politically popular to do that, especially back in February, or you know, a Democrat back in a police chief. You know, so um, 
Now, when it, so we're not anti-police by any means, but I look at the job as the main job is to run the county jail, which sure. is corrections, not law enforcement. And that's just, you know, the sheriff and I, Hodgson, we have, we went through the campaign. We have a difference of opinion they, on that. Right. That's true. And there's, there is a difference between, I think, you know, you're referencing like uh, having sheriff department cars doing like a, a beat right. um, and the other law enforcement assistance that they have provided, you know, just to, having a cursory knowledge of it. You know, I hear, I hear in the news, I'm you know, in our news segments that uh, oftentimes uh, Bristol County Sheriff's Office will help execute search warrants on places, right, that have been fa- uh, uh, trafficking, you know, dangerous drugs like fentanyl. Um, you you have said that there there could be a role to play, uh, cont- a continued role to play for the sheriff's department in, in police budgets, but it's not going to be the primary role, and you're really going to focus on the corrections. Am I right about that? Yeah, that's right. We're, we're, you know, we will work with local, state, and federal law enforcement up, down, left, and right all day long. Mm-hmm. And we will work with them. I don't want to do their job. Yeah, that's the difference, you know, and so that's something that, and I don't want to, as you know, the the you know incumbent sheriff has said many times, and you know he we, again we just have a difference of opinion on this. He says, "Oh, I'm the chief law enforcement officer of the county," mm-hmm. and that's maybe that's true, and that's what it says in the the dictionary of the definition of a sheriff. But I want to leave law enforcement to the local police. You know, that's what and I want to focus so the police can arrest them will hold them um, having said that there has to be there is a relationship between police and the sheriff's office and you know there's that transition you know um, and assisting with law enforcement you know uh, with investigations so I understand that all that goes on and that will continue to go on so we're speaking with uh, sheriff elect Paul Haro um, we're taking your calls and app chat messages at 508-996-0500 you can also message on the WBSM app chat if you have a question for the sheriff elect um, one thing before we go to a break i just have one question uh are you gonna live in attleboro um because you know dartmouth's i it's it's not that close i didn't know if you were going to continue and it's still bristol county so it doesn't really matter but i was just wondering if you were planning on relocating no I, i'm going to keep my house in attleboro but actually a lot of people don't know this but there is no residency requirement for sheriff i could live in boston oh yeah you know there's actually no residence just like a member of you, congress you know what there was a there was someone that actually wanted to run in Plymouth County for Bristol County Sheriff. Yeah. I do remember they they yeah. had uh, mused about it at least. Yeah, so you don't you have to live in Massachusetts, but just like a member of Congress, you don't actually have to live in the congressional district. Yeah, There's yeah. nothing legally requiring somebody to live within the county so you can be outside although I don't encourage that. I th- I think that's, you know, not Yeah, you want to be a member of the community yeah, you're serving, yeah. sure. But no, I have my house in Attleboro. My family's in Attleboro and um, you know, it's basically the distance between Attleboro and Dartmouth is kind of like the same as going into Boston. Austin. It's just in the opposite direction. Right. Significantly better too, considering this, the traffic. The traffic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Although I, I, when I come down here, I usually go through. Uh, one, I take one ninety five to one ninety five, and I go through Providence. That's yeah. what my GPS says. That's what I usually do if I'm going up in that area. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I, I cut through uh, Providence, but with the, and there's a little bit of traffic there. But but basically, you know, it, it's it's really not a different commute than going into Boston, except for the traffic. Like when I was a state representative, oh my God, yeah. state representative, I leave my house at the wrong time. It's a two and a half hour drive one way. Right. You know, if you, or you leave the state house at the wrong time, it's a two and a half hour drive one way. Um, I don't think that'll be an issue with this. So 508-996-0500, uh, or we're taking your message on the WBSM app chat. If you have a question for, uh, or a comment for Sheriff Electoral, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. New Bedford's news talk station. But hey, welcome back. We're here with Sheriff Elect Haro. We're taking your calls at 508 996 0500. We're also taking your app chat messages. I got a lot of, I'm getting a lot of app chat messages actually. So, one of them, general comment uh, from Laura in Attleboro. Uh, bad day in Providence traffic beats a good day in Boston traffic. Uh, that's true. I've worked in both Boston and Providence. I can, I can affirm that as well. Um, we'll, uh, so, we've got a few app chat messages. We'll get to them. What about outside programs? Now, that's another conversation that we had. Um, he's, you know, he's named a few True Course. I'm not sure what True Course is. Autism Awareness. Now, I was, I'm chair of the Commission on Disability here in Fairhaven. We have uh, about 100 seatbelt covers that have, um, you know, basically uh, for a passenger that is living with autism. And uh, we're giving them out to the community. And basically, that will help a first responder identify somebody with autism and maybe uh, act accordingly in that situation. So um, there's uh, a caller that called in 
after you would the day after uh, the election when you had called in, uh, a caller had called in after and asked about the Are You OK program, which is a brief call to seniors that are living alone uh, just to see if they're OK. And so um, what's your position on the the sort of the more the the sort of civic engagement or the community engagement work of the sheriff's office? Will that continue? Will some of that get scaled back? It depends on what it is. Uh, if, if something is, um, you know, I'm being facetious. If something's just a feel good program to, you know, just get, uh, you know, the, the sheriff's name out there, regardless of who the sheriff is, me, the, you know, Tom or somebody else, that's not the type of thing that I'm going to be participating in. But, but like I said earlier, I have to know what is all, what all the programs are going on before I start making changes. What, what if it what if it services like a public good, you know, like. Like you know, what if it it satisfies uh, 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 or satisfied services a particular need out in the community that the sheriff's uh, currently fulfilling? Yeah, so if it, it depends on what it is. It depends on if it's something that um, is taking away from the jail. Yeah. You know, if so, it's we. So you only have so much bandwidth. You only have so many resources, and you can. Uh, so sure. if it's actually just taking away from our core mission, which is corrections, then I might try and uh, relocate that program to some other community group or some other uh, organization. Okay. Um, that's how you know. But, so I wouldn't. If if people are accustomed to something, I don't want to just pull the rug out from under them. That's sure. not how I operate. Would I? If if I don't want to do it, I'm going to find a new home for it. Okay. So, you know, that that's something that a lot of people have to, you know, like I don't just say okay, we're just not going to do this anymore. Yeah. Um and, unless unless it's something just egregiously a waste of time. And yeah. like, you know, we're offering um I don't know, a finger painting program <laughs> and they're saying the finger painting program is reducing recidivism. Well, guess what? I'll I'm probably not going to want to continue doing the finger painting. If they say the finger painting program is good for you know, uh, serenity within the jail system and it keeps people from being a little more, you know, uh, from acting out. Okay. That's a different thing than sure. reducing recidivism, you know, so we have to be clear about what our goals are. Like, so for everything, I have to go in, find out what's being offered inside the jail and outside the jail, look at whether or not it's delivering the outcomes we want. And outcomes are different than outputs. Outputs are just how many people we're servicing. Outcomes are, are those, efforts actually producing the changes so that's not that's a longer question to answer it takes time to answer that what what do we need to do um what's being done that's not working what should be reformed what should be scrapped and you know brought in something new that none of that can happen overnight that takes time to do and that's part of like i've worked in a jail and i've worked in a prison i know what i want the jail to look like yeah and it's going to take time to get there but i I do have a good sense of what i'd like it to look like and it's going to be a a place where we're really focused on corrections and rehabilitating behavior so uh 508-996-0500 is how you can ask uh sheriff elect hero a question we're also taking your uh, messages on wbsm app chat we got quite a few that was one of the questions the next one is Will the sheriff elect uh, continue to let de- this is from Kai in Fall River? Will the sheriff elect continue to let deputies do outside details? Uh, I'm going to have a conversation with the uh, Bristol County Chiefs of Police and find out uh, whether or not that's something they want to have continue. And okay, you know, so that's that'll be a conversation with me and the de- uh, the chiefs, the Bristol County. I have a meeting with them coming up. I believe we're going to be doing that in Norton um, in December. And, um, yeah, actually the Bristol County Chiefs of Police. They have like an organization. They do, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the Bristol County Chiefs of Police, they stayed out of this race. They didn't endorse anybody. They didn't, you know, they just they sure. said, no, we're just going to stay out of it. But uh, Chris, the uh, president of that organization, I think he's been a chief for just a few years. I think he's, a, if I remember right, he's the chief of Fairhaven even. Uh, if I no, Mike Myers is the chief of Fairhaven. Maybe. Chris, who? Uh, I forgot I'm blanking on his last name. We spoke about over probably a week or so ago. I've, I've talked to so many people in the last couple like, <laughs> yeah, weeks. Yeah, I know. Oh, I hear you. gosh, it's just like... I've, I've got still, I still haven't caught up on all my emails. Um, but anyway, the point is that I am going to be, um, you know, meeting with the uh, Bristol County Chiefs of Police very shortly. Okay, so um, there, uh, we've got a few more uh, app chat messages. Um, okay, another one is in 508-996-0500, so I can call and ask him a question too. Uh, I want to take a break before we get into this next uh, question because it might take a while. Yeah, let's yeah, let's do that. Let's take a break and you can continue to message us. You continue to you can continue to call at 508-996-0500 and uh we're here with Sheriff Electoro. So let's take a break. 
1420 WBSM, where freedom of speech lives. Hey, it's Data. Imagine if information came with a nutrition label. Then you'd know if what you're consuming has the right mix of verified facts, credible sources, and relevant context. But news and information doesn't come with a label. It's on us to develop a healthy news diet ourselves. Let's all resolve to strengthen our news literacy so we can make healthier choices about what news and information to consume, share, and act on. Test your news literacy fitness with our quiz at newslit.org. Exercise your right to be well-informed and get news lit fit. At Shiner's Hospitals for Children, there are a million reasons to share love. My buddy Caleb is one of them. This is his story. Hi, I'm Caleb. I was born with spinal bone disease. I have broken my bones almost 200 times, and I have had 11 surgeries. But I didn't let that stop me. There are a million reasons to share love, but you only need one. To learn how you can share love, visit loveshriners.org. Marcus McCarthy. South Coast Tonight is the place to react to all of the day's news and where they make some news of their own. I've been in right place. Back to the talk now on WBSM. Hey, welcome back. So it was Chris Richmond, the... Uh, the, the um Chief of Police in a Kushnet that had reached out to you just to, right. just to clarify for not, the record. I remember the name Chris correctly, but I remembered incorrectly. I remembered the uh, town. It wasn't Fairhaven, like I just said. It was a Kushnet, but I, I looked it up in the break in my email. So, yeah, we're, we're actually, he reached out to me, and we're going to be meeting together with all the Bristol County Chiefs of Police sometime in the next few weeks. All right, so we... Um we're, we're taking your messages still in the app chat. We're taking your calls, too, at 508-996-0500. We've got a bunch of app chat messages uh, so far. But um, th- this is an important question. What do you? What's your plan for the Ash Street Jail? The people that campaigned for you um, want it closed. That's right. What do you want to do when you become sheriff? Do you want to close it? Do you want to keep it open? What's your plan? Well, uh, you know, this this is a perfect example of, you know, I never once said I'm going to close it. And the the people that supported me, Bristol County for Correctional Justice and Coalition for Social Justice, yeah. they've been advocating that for that years. Close it, close it, close it. So, I mean, Hodgson's predecessor wanted it closed. Right, right. So, would I, I would I like to close it? I think that would be that would look great if I did, but I might be causing more problems than I'm solving. Okay. So I have to go in very cautiously, find out how many inmates are there, and if we take those inmates and put them in Dartmouth, are we creating more problems in Dartmouth? Yeah. And you know, so that's something I, I was clear about that in the during the campaign. You were. And I said, I've never made a promise about closing it. Yeah. Um, I always use the example of uh, Guantanamo Bay and Barack Obama. Barack Obama said during his campaign, yeah. On day one, I'm closing Gitmo. Yeah. And eight years later, as he was leaving, it was still open. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. you know, so I know better than that. And just as, you know, again, as, as my experience being a mayor, there's, you know, you don't want to, first of all, I never make promises. I just, I don't make promises. Yeah. I mean, other than just, you know, saying, I promise I'll look into something. I promise I'll try hard, but I don't make specifics because some things are beyond your control. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I, I don't think any politician should really ever make a promise other than just say, I promise I'll try hard. I'll promise to be honest, but those are very general things. Um, so yeah, as far as Ashtree goes, what I'd like to do is uh, assess it first. If we can move the people from Ash Street over to um, Dartmouth, that would then also the the uh, free up a lot of correctional officers because mm-hmm. there's economies of scale, having everybody in one location, that would be good. But again, I might be creating more problems than I'm solving. So you ideally it's a good thing, but like in terms of technocratic stuff and, and just the practical reality of it, you'd probably need an allocation from like the state house or something to expand on the facilities that you do have, or you're not sure you, you that might be the issue. Well, in Dartmouth, see, this is something I'm still uh, unsure sure of because I've heard both. Uh, Mm -hmm. If you look at the Mass Department of Correction, you look at the research division, they put out a report, a population report, and they will say that, you know, this this report is based on what DCAM, Division of Capital Asset Management, shows as the design capacity of Dartmouth. And if you look at what the design capacity of Dartmouth is and how many inmates we have, it's way overcrowded. Mm -hmm. Okay, But then if you talk to some of the correctional officers who are there, they might say, no, it's not overcrowded. In fact, we got a lot of space available. So which one is it? Is it, you know, that they are, in fact, overcrowded per the DOCs, you know, and the DCAM and the original design capacity or have over the last, you know, couple of decades, they reconfigured things. So the design capacity is different now than the rated capacity. This is sort of the technocratic thing that, again, you you can't really go in and just say, okay, this is what I'm going to do because you could be causing more problems than you're solving. 
at the level of a mayor, a governor, a sheriff, or you know whoever the chief executive of an organization, if it had a simple solution, it would have already been done. Sure. And, and so I appreciate that. Um, but again, the, the incumbent sheriff, Hodgson, he does things differently than me. We have a different set of priorities and we have some priorities are the same. You know, I admit he wants to keep people safe. I, I recognize that he wants to keep people within his walls. You know, so those we do share those similar priorities. Um, you know, we don't want inmates to be, you know, running out and running out, you know, just, sure. you know, we're not going to just open up the doors. You know, we're similar in that respect, but then in other ways we are different. So um, let's say... Let's say you could close Astry, right? Um, or let's say, actually, no. Let's say you couldn't. Um, is there anything in particular that you'd want to change about it, like off the top of your head? Well, I have to go in and find out what it looks like on the inside, how it's operating on the inside. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've worked in jail. I've worked in prison. I know what I, I know what things, like what I want the jail to look like. Sure. And it's not just me. I mean, uh, Louis Spencer, former commissioner of the DOC in Massachusetts, he reached out to me recently and said, Hey Paul, you know, I'm happy to come on board. I've had um, a lot of different sheriffs reach out to me, you know, current and former sheriffs saying, Hey Paul, we're glad you won. We'd love to, you know, help, you know, with, uh, you know, transition and getting your feet wet in there. And, you know, tomorrow at two o'clock, I'm meeting with Guy Glotus, you know, where, uh, you know, he's a former sheriff of Worcester County. Sure. And, you know, he actually lives out on the Cape now. But we are, um, you know, so I've had a, a lot of people reach out about support. And, you know, I, um, the first thing I need to do is get inside the organization mm -hmm. and, you know, meet with the, the staff that they have, not just bring in outside people. That's because I, I have to be mindful and respectful of the people that are there right now. Sure. If I just come in with an army of, uh, you know, or a team of people, that's going to cause a lot of anxiety. Yeah. And so I want people to get comfortable with me first, you know, the people being the staff, get yep. comfortable with me first, understand that, you know, I, um, you know, I respect their institutional knowledge, but I'm also coming in with a mandate for change and we're going to achieve that together over the course of time. Um, if they want to be part of that, great. If they, you know, they, if they don't want to be part of that, if they, they're just totally loyal to Hodgson and they just say, no, I just don't share this vision. That's fine. They, you know, if, if that's how they feel, then maybe there's another organization that's better you know, uh, suited for them. Sure. Um, but the people did elect me, uh, with a mandate for change. I will say barely, <laughs> you know, yeah. I got 50.6%, which is the smallest margin of error I've had in uh, 10 competitive races. Yeah. Um, I've never had such a, you know, I, I, you might remember in our debate with Hodgson that we had here, Hodgson. And you know, he said, uh, I, I said to him, you know, was, I think the camera, the, the cameras, the uh, microphones are off. I said, yeah, it's going to be a close race. And, you know, I, I, I knew, I knew I was not getting above 51%, mm -hmm. but I also knew I was not getting below 49. Right. I knew it was going to be a close race. I, I was under, I did not think I was going to get 60% or 55%. I knew it was going to be between 49 and 51. Of course. Yeah. To take out a, a long time incumbent that so uh, typically is a, is a close race. So, so, um, uh, Sheriff Elect Hero, let's take a break. Actually, sure. we'll, we'll be right back. Um, Sheriff Elect Hero, he's staying for the eight o'clock hour too. So if you want to give him a call or get, uh, shoot a shoot him a message uh, on the app chat, or give him a, give us a call at five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred if you have a uh, if you have a question for him. I want to get into this a little bit in the eight o'clock hour, but um, immigration uh, that was another topic that was debated throughout the campaign. You are still holding the position that the sheriff should have a limited, if not no, role in immigration enforcement. Uh, in in uh, in local immigration enforcement, yeah, the immigration is an important issue. It is, and a lot of people are really angry about illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. They're angry that people aren't coming over here uh, lawfully. They're angry that the you know are taking jobs that people here are not doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there so a lot of people are very angry about this m issue. But that's a job for the federal government. And, you know, as sheriff, I will work with the federal government, do, you know, if they need information, we're going to give them whatever information they need. We're never going to, uh, you know, make life difficult for them to do their job. You know, if they have, uh, if they're requesting information, if they want to come in, we'll open the doors for them. You know, sure. but we're not going to do their job, though. Um, having said that, the a sheriff or any politician, the sheriff is a politician, you know, the sheriff is a politician. You have a bully pulpit. And as a politician, you can pursue any policy area you want. Of course. So is, is this going to be one where I use a lot of my political capital? No, it's not. Because my border of, you know, in, in Bristol County 
is Rhode Island. <laughs> right. okay? yeah, yeah. You know, my border, I have yeah. a border with Pawtucket. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, it, it was, during COVID, there were some people saying, Paul, you need to stop people from coming over from Pawtucket. I said, yeah. you want me to build a border wall with Pawtucket? You know? <laughs> yeah. So, right. I mean, it's, um, you know, that that's who, you know, now, are people coming up here? Yeah, very few and far between. There's not a lot of people. You know, I mean, I, during the one of the debates, I think Hodgson said, it, it was in the debate in the studio, he said that more people, illegal immigrants are coming to Massachusetts than any other state in the country, which is just factually not true. I mean, okay. it's just, it, we, we, there are far more legal immigrants going into California than they are into Massachusetts. I think you two got into the weeds in an immigration debate and yeah. I, um, I cut you off. I yeah, cut you both off. Well, I mean, it, okay. So it's an important <laughs> issue, but it's not yeah, of course. one that I'm going to spend a lot of political capital on. Mm-hmm. I'm going to spend my political capital, um, not at, down in Washington talking about illegal immigration. I'm going to spend it in Beacon Hill talking about housing, health care, and a job, rehabilitation. That's where I'll spend my, you know, that's the bully pulpit that I'll be using. So a politician can do that. And, and, and you know, Tom Hodgson, he has every right to do that. Absolutely. He has every right to pursue illegal immigration as a sheriff, and he, he's got every right to make that one of his priorities. I, I, I don't take that away from him. As a politician, that comes with the territory. It's just not going to be my priority. Mine is going to be on more, again, more focused on the jail itself, housing, health care, and a job, uh, rehabilitation. It, it's people don't really get excited about housing, health care, and a job. Yeah. It's just not an exciting topic or rehabilitation. Oh my God, did you hear that the program works? Oh wow, that's so cool, so exciting. Right. Oh, the program doesn't work. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. It's not nearly as exciting. It's not nearly as emotional or anger provoking as illegal immigration. And so I don't think I'm going to be in the newspaper uh, you know, for, for those reasons, I'll be in the newspaper for other reasons in there. It's, it's a little bit more boring reasons, sure. but in my opinion, a little bit more meaningful, a little, it'll have a bigger impact. We'll get a bigger bang for our buck. So Sheriff like Paul Rowe, he's staying for the eight o'clock hour. If you want to give us a, a, a call at 508-996-0500 or shoot us a message on the WBSM app chat. We're just closing out the eight o'clock, uh, the seven o'clock hour now. So we'll, we'll...